How are you doing, Duff here? And on my hobby room desk, you see my Gotway Monster. It's so big that it hardly fits on here, but it does fit. Um, I am going to take the cover off and take a look at the wiring and the electronics and the MOSFETs and the motor connectors. And um, I've done this on my M Super, you know, because um, you know there was several, there's been several scares with um, wiring and and uh, Gotway products. And the monsters, for the most part, have been okay. Although Ian did pop the MOSFET on, uh, I don't even know if it was a MOSFET, but he, he did pop something on his board, or on his wheel. I'm not even sure if it was on the main board. Uh, but he did pop something on his monster during his 1,000 mile ride going up a steep incline. So, um, But the reason that I got inspired to open up my monster was because Joey Saren posted, a video, or posted some pictures of a wheel that he had just bought, a monster. Uh, same color as mine. Uh, yesterday, I, th I think he got it. And when he opened it up, pulled the side cover, and looked at the circuit board, it was a mess. Like the yellow motor wire was looked like it was fried. <coughs> the insulation was half burned. Um, it just it just it just looked bad. It looked really bad inside. And at first, I thought this was a brand new uh, monster. And he said he did actually get it from a, a reseller, I guess, off the eBay or something. So. Um, it seemed like it was pretty much a pump and dump. There was something going on there that he didn't know about. So, just for my own peace of mind, I'm going to take the cover off and see what it looks like. My monster has probably uh, roughly 90 to 95 miles, getting close to 100, something like that. So, um, I'm just going to take off a bunch of screws first. Yeah, this is magnetic, so let's try this. One advantage of the big size with the um, monster is you can actually remove the side panel without pulling the without pulling the pedal first. I wonder how much extra it would cost Gotway to use high quality screws to hold on pieces like this. You know, that, that are made of low-grade steel that, that strip super easy. I really don't think it would add much to the bottom line. As you may be able to tell, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit down on Gotway right now. And I'm still looking to buy my Kingsong KS16S, just looking for a uh, more appropriate financial time to do it. We have some um, events coming up soon. We're going to be going to a, going to a convention in a couple weeks, or a month, I guess. And also we're going to be doing a short road trip up the East Coast, so I'm kind of trying to uh, save my money for those events instead of buying my 7th or 8th unicycle in the last year, year and a half. I really, really hope that there's nothing scary going on under here, because I've just been assuming that since I haven't had any problems that I've, uh, you know, my wheel is mechanically not bad, but if I've learned, learned anything about Gotway over the last six months is um, assuming they did things correctly is not a safe assumption. And you are risking your well-being if you assume that. Okay. I think that was the last one. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, there's, there's one hidden one here beneath the pad. Okay. That should be all the screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I count eleven screws. What the hell? I just <laughs> I got home. My phone was fully charged. All I did was turn the speaker on, and I go to pick it up, and it's it's turned off. Odd. Okay, so let's see how difficult it is to get this cover off. I know up top here there's going to be. Um, tape where the batteries are. There we go. Got my fingers under it. Now I'm just going to uh, try and do this without screwing up the case. I'm just going to slowly pry this up. It looks like the battery is actually sticking to the side cover. Oh crap. I lied. I thought there was only one screw up here. There's a couple more hiding. Two more. So 
that would give me a total of 13 screws. Let's try this again. I kind of remember Ian having to deal with this too. Although this is only a 1600 watt hour monster, so not quite as much battery to deal with. Okay, case cover is off. Really tight in there. All right. Okay, so let's see if we can get a better look here. Boom, what the hell? Okay, let's see what we got. First of all, you can tell that I don't do a lot of trail riding. Muddy riding on my wheel. Let's see if we can get nice and tight here. Because that board looks pretty clean. I'm not seeing any of the burning. I know in Joey's case, like one of his motor wires connectors wasn't even pushed together solidly, so all mine appear to be solidly connected. All my you know, motor connectors. Um, I see no burning on the wires as you know signs of heat stress this is interesting um, I don't know if I've noticed this before this um, little like metal spring like it's almost like a on a garden hose how you have a spring to uh, give support to the hose right by where it attaches to the nozzle like a stress relief kind of thing this has something similar along the cables running from the actual motor which is interesting and like I said, this is probably you can probably see a little bit clearer now. Everything, as far as I can tell, looks clean, not stressed, not burned, so that's all good. Oh, and you can see the two fans hiding back here. I only, th I only thought there was one fan, but there's actually two fans uh, positioned right by the heatsink. There's two. I don't, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but yeah, trust me, there's two fans there. Uh, so yeah, I think my uh, my monster is okay. I don't see anything much like my. 67 volt M Super. I don't see anything that um, is making me worry, so that's a good thing. So let me uh, let me put this back together and wrap things up. The um, one thing I am taking care of to do is that I'm routing all these wires uh, out of the way of those screw stops that are used for the cover. You certainly don't want anything pinched. Please be sure to do that as well. When I, when I pulled the battery and how the battery was sticking to the case, that's why those pulled out with it. So I'm just making sure to tuck those back in clean and making sure that they're not pinched in any fashion. See itself back in its proper position without any fuss, which is nice. So I do feel better that um, the board and the wires look okay in my like I said, when I saw Joey's wheel at first and, and having the impression that that was a brand new wheel from Godway, that that freaked me out big time. You know, I'm a little paranoid now based on everything that's been going on with Godway. So that was not a good sight, but like I said, it really wasn't quite what um, I thought at first. Joey had a theory where I guess he said that the unit came without a, without a battery, possibly. And um, yeah, it was shipped without a battery and he had a theory that possibly the the loose battery connector, the I guess it's an X, XT60 connector, made contact with something metallic inside and shorted across across those connectors. If he sees this video, I'm sure he'll chime in to correct me if I'm wrong. But I think his theory was that that possibly maybe some something shorted out across those battery terminals, which could have caused the heat because he. He thought that the heat looked like it came externally that baked that wire as opposed to internally. So, again, I'll show that picture and you can judge for yourself. I'm, I'm not really sure about that, but, um, yeah, so that, that was his theory on it. But with Joey, I mean, he's, he, he's, uh, he's amazing. He, he amazes me with his skills, like, you know, the way he built that 26-inch off-wheel, or off-wheel, off-road wheel. Uh, his fabrication skills, I mean, that thing even had a suspension built into it. Um, his fabrication skills are second to none, as far as I can tell. So, um, a couple burnt wires isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to slow him down. Um, and I'm actually, I'm kind of curious what his feedback will be in the monster, because this is, as far as I know, this is the first time he's had one. I mean, because he's, he has such a wide-ranging experience on electric unicycles. So, Joey, if you're watching this video, let me know. What do you think of the monster? 
I'm just kind of working my way back and forth here. You guys may hear the uh, 3D printer working in the background. Since I've gotten that thing, it's <laughs> it's been going damn close to non-stop. I've just been printing, printing, printing. I printed probably between 30 and 40 parts for a, um, a cosplay gun that uh, Cindy is working on. She's now in the process of assembling those parts. Um, I printed a, an iPhone 6 holder. It took like 18 hours because it was set to uh, print at such a, a high resolution. Like I think each layer was set to 0.1 millimeters and it was 100% infill. So that thing took forever, but it um, it's really strong. I mean, it's I guess the reason to do that is for strength and durability, and it's it is super super strong, and it turned out well. I, I used it at work today, and I really like it. Um, I also printed a um, a 3D lampshade that I actually created myself in Fusion 360. Now, granted, I, I created it by uh, just following a YouTube video and going step by step. I don't know if Fusion 360 nearly well enough to do that kind of stuff myself, but it was cool. It kind of opened my eyes to the possibilities. You know, once you get familiar with the interface and, and the, the process, I mean, the sky is really the limit, and I think, like, Matthias has kind of demonstrated that based on some of the stuff that he's come up with. You know, being able to fabricate uh, mud guards for the, for the M Super, and um, I think he said he's working on fabricating a 3D printing a seat. For the M Super, and if he does that, I'm gonna I'll, I'll print that as well for sure. Um, so yeah, he, he really really is doing some great things. And even though I don't know that I have the time to get as proficient at it as he is, I, I am interested in learning. It's pretty cool just to be able to have a concept for something, and nothing more than a concept, and a 3D printer, and some time and effort, and you you, you can fabricate complex parts. And, and, and usable parts, you know, it's just it's really, really cool. And I'm not sure why I waited so long to get into it, into 3D printing, but I'm glad I'm there now. Okay, so that's my last screw. So let's put this beast on the floor and make sure it still turns on. Oh, so heavy. Ah. Turned on. It's balancing. Excellent. In case you're wondering what I am 3D printing now, there you go. It's a skull. It's a mesh skull. Very intricate design, but as you can tell, it's, it seems to be printing quite well. Pretty close up. Wow. All right, so there you go. Inside of my monster looks A-OK. -okay. A-OK. -okay. And uh, glad to see that. If you have a monster, it might not be a bad idea to pop it off. As you can see, it was not difficult. 13 screws, a little prying to uh, separate the double-sided tape, and you can check it yourself. Mine looks very clean, no heat damage, and uh, hopefully I plan to keep it that way. So, Anyways, hope you found this video not too boring, and uh, feel free to uh, share your opinions, comments below. As always, I always appreciate users that take the time to like my video. It's so difficult. Like my video, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It helps the channel out, and I greatly appreciate it. So, anyways, until next time, Duff Man out.